five, I'm asked to find a derivative and then use it. And again, the function that I'm dealing with, f of x, is 1 over 2 square root of 3x plus 1. They say the point is 0, 1 half. Now, you know, do I actually know that that's a point? I guess I should check. What is f of 0? Well, it would be 1 over 2 square root of 0 plus 1. Yes, that's 1 half, because the square root of 1 is 1. So when they tell me that 0, 1 half is a point on the curve, I believe them. You guys with me? By the way, one thing you might want to think about is the domain of this function. What's the domain? Well, a couple things. One is that I think that 3x plus 1 has to be bigger than or equal to 0. Right? Otherwise, what happens? You get a negative number. Okay. And it's also true, also, 3x plus 1 cannot equal 0. Right? Why? Because if it equaled 0, you'd have a 0 in the denominator. So really, I guess I should, I, should, I should change this greater than or equal to to a greater than. So 3x plus 1 is greater than 0. 3x is greater than one, uh, negative 1. So it sounds to me like negative 1 third to infinity, this would be the domain of the function. It's not what they asked. They asked me to compute a derivative, but I just wanted to point that out. That if you're talking about a graph of any kind, you really can only talk about from negative one-third to infinity. Okay. <clears throat> so, here I go. I'm going to ask you to um, compute the derivative. So, f prime of x, we know, equals limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Guys in the back can read that, right? Okay. So when I fill these things in, I tell people, hey, put the h there. Fill in f of x. So that's 1 over 2 square root of 3x plus 1. And I realize that's hard to read because it's starting to get small. But I'm about to fix that. Right here, I'm going to write 1 over 2 square root 3. And the only change I'm going to make is where it used to say x, what am I going to write? x plus h in parentheses. I still need a minus 1, or no, plus 1 under the radical, under the fraction bar. And I claim that's getting ugly. Right? So we want to try and work on this a little bit. And so there's a trick I showed you guys last time. <clears throat> Sometimes instead of dividing something ugly by h, it's nicer if we <coughs> multiply by what? 1 over h. So let's write it as 1 over h times, and now I'll just write the two fractions down. So the first, and in parentheses, right? So the numerator is now going to be in parentheses after the 1 over h fraction. This can help you clean it up. So the first part would be 1 over 2 square root of 3x plus 3h plus 1. And this one would be 1 over 2 square root of 3x plus 1. <clears throat> I always tell people, you want to get better at algebra, take calculus. 
that'll help. Because right now it's just a big algebra problem. So can I subtract these algebraic fractions? I can if I get a common denominator. And I claim that the common denominator that I want, so let me write this down. Limit h approaches 0, 1 over h times, again, it's a big mess. But I claim that the common denominator that I'm going to want is going to have a 2 in it, right? And it's going to have a couple of square roots in it. One of the square roots will be this one. 3x plus 3h plus 1. And the other square root would be this one. 3x plus 1. You guys with me so far? What happened to the second? Really what I'm doing is I'm multiplying these fractions, top and bottom. So like this fraction gets multiplied on top and bottom by square root of 3x plus 3h plus 1. Do you guys understand that? What about the other one? That gets multiplied top and bottom by what? The square root of 3x plus 1. So I think what the numerator will be when I subtract the fractions is this. Square root of 3x plus 1 minus square root of 3x plus 3h plus 1. Are you with me? Again, there was something I did that I didn't show very clearly. I multiplied top and bottom of this fraction by square root of what? 3x plus 1. 3x plus 1. Let me write it in there in red. So would you agree that these two fractions now have the same denominator? Yeah. Yes, they do. When you add or subtract fractions with the same denominator, denominator stays the same, it's still there. Right? You know that rule about fractions, you just usually don't have them this ugly. Okay? But, but you know the rule. All right, so now what am I going to do? Well, what would happen if I plugged in h equals 0 right now? So you get a 0 in the numerator, you get a 0 in the denominator, right? So we still have hope. Maybe we could do something. Ideas? Hmm. That's what I think when I see square roots. Multiply by the conjugate. And it's funny, they used to do that to get the radical out of the denominator, but lately it seems like I've been doing it to get the radical out of the numerator. It's kind of funny. So I'm going to multiply. Multiply by the conjugate. So what, what do I mean by that? I'm going to multiply by... Wow, I guess it's square root plus square root over square root plus square root. Is that okay or do I have to write in what, what's inside those square roots? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? It's the square root of 3x plus 1 and the square root of 3x plus 3h plus 1. And now the back row can't see anymore. It's an ugly problem. Okay, but that helps in theory. Let's see if it helps. Equals limit as h approaches 0, 1 over h times. And let's see what the denominator has now become. Actually, why don't I just put the h in the denominator, right? You multiply fractions, right? You just multiply straight across. So in the denominator, I now have an h times 2 times a square root of 3x plus 3h plus 1 times the square root of 3x plus 1 times that new green thing. I guess I'll keep it green. So what was that? That was the square root of 
3x plus 1 plus the square root of 3x plus 3h plus 1. Raise your hand if you like this problem. You can thank Janice then, all of those that were millions of people that rose their hand. All right, so <clears throat> what are we doing now? Numerator, right? When I multiply square root of 3x plus 1 times square root of 3x plus 1, I get 3x plus 1. <coughs> when you do the outer and inner, those cancel out. All the radicals are going to go away when you multiply conjugates. The only thing left I have to do is subtract what I get when I multiply this one by that one. And that would be 3x plus 3h plus 1. Is that parentheses important around that, that radical? Yeah. You distribute it. Distribute the negative. Lots of stuff drops out. Now I have the limit as h approaches 0. The denominator, I have 2h, square root, square root, parentheses with square root plus square root. Right? And in the numerator, what do I have? Is the only thing left negative 3h? Is that true? <clears throat> That's good, because then what can I do? I can cancel these H's. So I'll do that and I'll go to the next step. And now I will write out very carefully what I'm left with. Equals limit as H approaches zero of, let's see, negative three over two square root of three X plus three H plus one times square root of 3x plus 1 times, and I'll in green write this is square root of 3x plus 1 plus square root of 3x plus 3h plus 1. Beautiful problem. It's going to fit on one page. All right. What happens next? We get the h out of here, right? Because h is going where? Zero. To zero. So if I plug in a zero, what I get is negative three over two times the square root of three x plus one, because that h went away, times another square root of three x plus one, times, and then the green stuff isn't it true that this is going to be 2 square root of 3x plus 1? Right? Because there's two of them. So I'm getting this is negative 3 over 4 times 2x plus 1. How do I get 2x plus 1 without any square root? Well, I took one of them and multiplied by another one, so the square root went away. And then we have here another square root, oh yeah, these are three, sorry. And we have another square root of 3x plus 1. So this is an okay answer, or even better maybe, would be this answer, negative 3 over 4 times 3x plus 1 to the 3 halves power. I like that answer the best. You add a one-half, a one-half, and a one-half power. You add all those exponents, and you get three-halves power. So that's my answer. Whoa. OK, I, I actually have one more thing to say about this problem. We didn't finish. Because all we did was find the derivative, right? What do you use the derivative for? Find the slope of the? tangent line at this point, right? Okay. Resume. We got the derivative. Let's write down what we know on the next sheet. We know f of x 
was equal to 1 over 2 square root of 3x plus 1. That's the original f of x. We just computed in part a f prime of x, and we got that is negative 3 over 4 times 3x plus 1 to the 3 halves power. So we got that. We got, what else? Oh, we were given a point. If we know the point go, that this function goes through is 0, 1 half. Okay? So the other thing that the problem asks me in part B <clears throat> is to write an equation of the tangent line. So we need <coughs> an equation for the tangent line at, well, x equals 0. So what I recommend is what's called point-slope form. You guys all know that? Try to write it down. It's an old algebra thing. Right? And where it says y1, what are we gonna fill, what are we gonna put there? One half, right? The y coordinate of the point we have. So y minus one half equals Oh, the slope. I don't have the slope yet, right? To get the slope, I need to use the derivative, but I also need to put the right number in for x, right? What number do I have to put in for x? Well, whatever x1 is, right? So in this case, it's 0. But it's whatever the x1 is that you're going to use. So, yeah, we need f prime of 0. So what is f prime of 0? I guess it would be negative 3 over 4 times, well, this would end up being 0 plus 1 to the 3 halves power. So I'm getting negative 3 fourths. Is that what you guys got? I'm glad they made x equals 0. Or this would be hard to compute, possibly. You know? So we get negative 3 fourths for the slope. And then it would be x minus 0. You guys with me? So if I want to put it in my calculator, I can. I can say y equals, wouldn't it be negative 3 fourths x? And if I bring that 1 half over, isn't it plus 1 half? Let me do that quickly to verify. I'm going to have my calculator. <clears throat> so if I punch in the original function, so it would be, 1 divided by, open parentheses, 2 times square root 3x plus 1, close parentheses, close parentheses again. And then y2, I'm saying that I have negative 3 fourths times x um, plus 1 half. And if I graph these together, I should see a function and its tangent line. There it is. You see that? That's the tangent line at 0. Good. Good review question. We want to talk about 59. Part A is a little challenging, but I think I can do it very quickly. So I'm going to give it a shot. says, show that, well, first of all, what are we talking about? We're talking about the collection of rectangles with area 100. We know that x times y is 100, right? So for example, it might be 10 by 10, or it might be, you know, 5 by 20. There's lots of rectangles that have that. 
But in general, <clears throat> the claim is that if you have x and y, that the perimeter is given by, and this is what part A says, show that the perimeter is given by, go back to it, P of x equals 2x plus 200 over x. OK. Where x, it says, is the length. Oh, now I don't like my picture. Because it looks to me like I made x the width. Can I, can I redraw my picture? All right, let's do that. Let's not draw this picture. Let's redraw it correctly. We want x to be the length, right? We know the area is 100. Hey, I know what the width is. Do you know what the width is? I called it y last time, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to claim that y has to be equal to 100 divided by x. How do I know that? Because you have to multiply them together and get what? 100. Does that make sense to people? OK, then this is x, and this is 100 over x. If you understand that picture, then p of x is x plus x, there's my 2x, plus 100 over x, plus 100 over x. Are you with me? Part A is done. But that's not testing calculus. That's testing algebra and geometry. So maybe if I were to do a problem, what I might do <coughs> is give you the formula. Of course, they gave you the formula, right? Maybe part A is stretch, and then part B, we're really testing the intermediate value theorem. So let's see what it says. 2x plus 200 over x, right? What is this a formula for? Thanks, guys. Perimeter of rectangle with length, what? Am I going too fast? Length what? And area 100. So in part A, that's what we did. We came up with that formula. All right, let me read what it asked me to do in part B. It says, use the intermediate value theorem to show there's at least one rectangle between 2 and 30 with, with perimeter 50. Wow. Very nice application. <coughs> they told me x is between 2 and 30. And they say, show there is at least one rectangle with this length, in other words, between 2 and 30, with perimeter 50. What a great problem. Now, if it were me on a test, probably one of the things I would do is ask you, first of all, for part A and a half, like between part A and B, I would say this. State the intermediate value theorem. Just to make it real clear what you're going to use on this problem. And make sure, because it could be that a student knows the intermediate value theorem, but then can't use it. But I want to give you points for knowing it. So what I would say is, let F be continuous on what kind of interval? What kind of interval is that, guys? Closed, thanks. Um, suppose um, f of a is less than k, and that's less than f of b. Then there exists c uh, somewhere on AB. 
such that, do you remember what the conclusion is? It was f of c will equal k. Now, what's the k that I'm going after in my problem? I want my output to be 50. You see, you're going to apply this to the perimeter function. So we want p of some c to be 50. Almost out of time. Next, I compute p of 2. And I'm getting, that's 104. And next, I compute, because that's my f of a. Next, I compute p of 30. 60 plus 20 thirds is um, 66 and 2 thirds, I think. No. Did something wrong. Problem. What's my problem right now, guys? My problem is that the perimeter 50 doesn't show up between there, those. But if it did, I'd know I'm done because that's a continuous function. <coughs> and it's 925 and I made an error. Shoot. Or this. You, you cannot conclude anything. Do you understand why? Because 50 is not between those numbers. Are you with me? Yeah. All right. I'll try and give you one where 50 would be between the numbers if I did something like that. Nice work today, guys.